Hello, everyone. My name is Brennan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And welcome to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. Today, I'd like to give you my five favorite Star Wars planets. These are not necessarily worlds that I would want to live on. But I would say that most of them are. Now, before we get into that, I need to address something. I don't want to get into the specifics. But something happened this last weekend. Particularly on Thursday and Friday that was very troubling. There was a certain individual who said some, who bashed someone's opinion and offended a few people. And I found it to be very distressing for several reasons, but let me just sum it up by saying this. If you have an opinion, about something that is going to happen in Star Wars or if you have something you believe is coming up in The Rise of Skywalker because the the situation being discussed that led to this um, unfortunate situation was the possible redemption of Kylo Ren now, the movie's not out yet, so you may have an opinion about what is what you think is going to happen. You may have an opinion about do you think that Kylo Ren deserves redemption or not. No matter what your opinion is on anything, not just Star Wars, but anything, that you have an opinion on, you need to be respectful of other people's opinions. Now, what happened was the individual in question called out another Star Wars fan and very loudly disagreed with that person's opinion. A person who was not on the show, by the way. It wasn't one of the co-hosts of the show on that on that particular day. It was someone online that said something about the redemption of Kylo Ren. And this other individual called out that person's opinion, called out that person by name, and bashed their opinion very loudly. Now, let me sum it up with this. We all need to be respectful. We all need to recognize that everybody is going to have a different opinion. Everybody has a right to an opinion. And it is not... Now, you can mention someone's name and say, I respectfully disagree with your opinion. But to loudly call them out and say some very unkind things that push your own opinion is not good etiquette. It's rude. It's wrong. And it is insulting and offensive. At the same time, everyone needs to be respectful over everybody else's opinion. No one should feel that their opinion is more valid or that their point of view is more valid and say that another person's point of view is not valid. But we need to be careful about how we say these things. <laughs> that we speak respectfully, kindly. If we have a disagreement, we need to be very respectful in our disagreements. So, let's all just be kinder to each other when it comes to expressing our opinions. 
those are my thoughts on the matter. Now, let's get into our favorite planets. My favorite planets. I should say. All right, number five, Scarif. Scarif first appeared at the climax of Rogue One. Scarif is a tropical planet with lots of archipelagos and islands where the Death Star plans were held on one of the islands on the Citadel Tower, or in the Citadel Tower, I should say. Rogue One, as the team was called, which included our main characters, but also those who chose to go with them, went to Scarab of their own free will to get the plans. Thankfully, some of the rebel leaders decided to join them. Admiral Raddus arrived with a fleet to assist. Scarif I really like because it's it's got those beautiful islands. It looks like the weather's very nice, the water looks very inviting. It's got very lovely palm trees and nice beaches. Now I wouldn't want to live there during Imperial occupation. But I'd certainly like to have a beach house on Scarif. Just, you know, spend some time sun tanning and and just enjoying the beautiful water and the beautiful breeze and just, just enjoying that. It really seems like it'd be quite a place to live. So that's my number five, Scarif. Number four, the forest moon of Endor. Now, the forest moon of Endor is one of the more geographically diverse places that we see in Star Wars, or at least I think it is. Uh, the, the further climate diversity of the moon, the forest moon of Endor was explored in the uh, in the Ewok movies. Do you remember those from the 80s? Caravan of Courage and Ewok's Battle for Endor. <laughs> yes, I did watch those as a kid. I think Battle for Endor is actually pretty good. Uh, pretty well done, I think. Then it starred Mr. Diabetes himself, Wilfred Brindley. That being said, those movies showed off the fact that there were deserts and other more diverse places on the moon of Endor. I think from orbit, it looks like there's water, too. Oceans, and there's forests and oceans and deserts. Now, I would not want to live in the forest, because um, who knows what <coughs> rather uh, ferocious creatures dwell there. You know, just look at Logres, who's one of the, the, who's the Ewok medicine man. Look at the fact that he's wearing a giant bird skull on his head. Not a bird I would want to run into. Also, I would not want to get on the bad side of the Ewoks. If I was their friend, though, I'd love to go and hang out in their village. You know, bright tree village, hang out in the trees. Tell Logre to shove it. <laughs> Logre is kind of a jerk, if you, if you remember. You know, get some sage advice from Chief Chirpa and hang out with Wicket and Princess Nisa and many of the others. Kapu and a lot of the other Ewoks. Yes, I know their names. I'm not ashamed to admit it. So the reason it's my number four is because I wouldn't really want to live in the forest, but I would certainly like to live, if I could, among the Ewoks or hang out in the more pleasant parts of the planet. Or moon, I should say. So that's my number four, the forest moon of Endor. Number three, Coruscant. Yet again, I would not want to live on Coruscant permanently. But I would love to have a nice apartment or a nice penthouse on Coruscant. Just there's something attractive to me about the urban 
feel, or at least a visit. You know, it, it's kind of like, uh, I live in a more suburban area, which is closer to nature. I like to go and visit, you know, big cities and downtowns and metro, met, metropolitanes. If that's a word, metropolitan, maybe, but I wouldn't want to live there permanently. But the nice apartment, right? I'm a big window where I can see the city. Go and hang out at the Senate. Go and hang out at the Jedi Temple Ziggurat. Um, all kinds of neat stuff. Now, I would not want to venture too far into the underworld. Uh, not my kind of place. So, that's my number three, Coruscant. Number two, Tatooine. Yes, Tatooine. I love the heat. I have to admit that. Also, I think the geography of Tatooine is very interesting to me. Just watching the uh, race, the pod race in uh, Phantom Menace. As they go through all these interesting rock formations. And and if you, you know, played Shadows of the Empire, you know, there's that Beggar's Canyon chase. So it'll be interesting to go and see Beggar's Canyon, to go and see uh, Mos Eisley and Mos Espa, go to the racetrack, go hang out at Ben Kenobi's old house, go and visit the Lars Homestead, or what's left of it. Um, you know, definitely would not want to be there during the Imperial Occupation. Go and hang out at Jabba's Palace, maybe try to get on his good side. You know, things to that degree. So that's what I'd enjoy doing. I, I would, I, yet again, I don't know if I'd want to live there, like, all the time. I'd have a little hut. I wouldn't want to live outside the city. I'd rather live in one of the cities because Tuscan Raiders and other various threats like Krayt Dragons and who knows if there's other sort like bits. I wouldn't want to live near that. But I would definitely like to live, visit there quite often and hang out in one of the city spaceports. But if I had a speeder bike or something, I'd go and hang out at other locations. Especially at a very fast speeder bike, so I can get away from danger. Well, that's my number two, Tatooine. Number one, Naboo. I just realized that my top three are all seen in The Phantom Menace. Naboo is fantastic. Beautiful lakes. Beautiful grassy plains and forests. And oceans and just mm, it's a breathtakingly beautiful planet. Um, very interesting life forms, many of whom are carnivores. Well, I'm sure it's got its fair share of carnivores, though we don't seem to see as many. Except deep in the ocean. I would not want to go there. I'd want to maybe hang out at Autogunga, the Gungan city. Hang out and feed, go and explore the grassy plains. Have a nice little house there. But Naboo, I think, is a planet I could live on permanently, though I don't know what the temperatures on Naboo are like. I like the heat, so it might not work for me. But Naboo, I also find to be one of the more geographically and climate diverse, well, geographically, I don't know about climate geographically diverse places in the Star Wars universe. And I just absolutely love it. And I would love to live there. Yet again, not under Imperial occupation. Maybe during the time of Queen Amidala. Before the Trade Federation showed up. But it's a beautiful planet. A great addition to the Star Wars universe. And I would absolutely love to live there. So that's my number one, Naboo. Let's recap. If I can remember the order. <laughs> uh, gosh, why am I drawing a complete blank right now? 
Number five, Scarif. Number four, the Forest Moon of Endor. Number three, Coruscant. Number two, Tatooine. And number one, now the, please forgive my uh, momentary brain fart. So those are my top fives. Let me know what Star Wars planets you would like to live on. My name is Brennan Moore. You can follow me on YouTube at Tasty Waffle. You can follow me on Twitter at Brennan Blue, B R E N N E N B L U E. And thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Brendan Mark. That noise you hear is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. May the Force be with you. <laughs>